Hello, everybody. This is Timmy Boy on DS106 TV. And you might be noticing I look a little different. Uh, I am in virtual reality at the moment, waiting on Jim. His headset is charging. So he told me to get in here and start talking to people and kill time while his headset charges to a point that he can turn it on. So there you have it. Um, but we're trying something out a little bit different this morning. This is Alt Space VR. It is one of several different apps for the virtual reality headsets that are out there. And it's one that allows you kind of like Second Life, kind of kind of like that situation where you've got friends and you can join them. Uh, but, you know, much more immersive because you're in the space. Um, and you can talk to people and do all kinds of interesting stuff and so the idea behind this reclaim today episode is to kind of discuss some of that discuss what does it look like to have spaces like this and you know to be able to connect with people remotely in a time when that's pretty much one of the only ways that you can socialize so that being said jim is going to join us shortly um, i'm wondering I don't know if I can take this camera. So this is a new setup for me, as is usual. And, you know, much to Jim's uh, chagrin, um, I threw a curveball at him this morning and said, let's try this app instead. So <laughs> uh, I got an account, he got an account, and we set all this up within you know, uh, a few minutes. I've been playing with it for maybe the past 20 minutes, just getting things working for this podcast. Uh, and so... Uh, I've got the headset on, I'm here in my office, and I'm waiting on Jim, um, but I've actually got a third account that's looking at me with the camera pointed at me, and so I don't know um, what I can do. Let me see if I can control this camera for you, uh, and we can kind of move around a little bit. I think that's a good idea. You don't need to look at me for this part. Um, I can just control the camera, and we can kind of walk around the space that I'm in right now while we wait on Jim and I'll I'll listen for him he'll come in um, to my quote unquote virtual house uh, at some point here shortly so let me pop my headset up here for just a second uh, and I can come over here and we can kind of control this I believe uh, Yeah, so um, I'm going to leave my avatar over there alone, and we will just do a tour of the space right now. So uh, this is considered my quote-unquote home. Um, <laughs> I didn't do any design work in this. This is, uh, I guess, a, a living room. There's a little fireplace. Um, I'll go back to where you would typically spawn. There's... Uh, basketball hoop and stuff this is kind of like a rooftop deck it's a nice home actually right <laughs> uh, and this is the main room you've got an area with like a record player which is awesome guitars on the wall uh, a little office space over here <laughs> that's funny with the VR headset very realistic in that regard and so the idea behind this app is like I said you've got friends they can jump into a space with you there's also events that are held in here and so you can actually see my menu here so if I open this up this is pretty wild so if I go to discover here you can see all the various events that are happening in this place called alt space uh, and there's all kinds of events sing for fun so people actually do karaoke in here um, there are live events uh, work from home monday sing seems like a co-working space maybe which is interesting um, different meetups that people do um, sometimes there's live events with comedians here's a educators in vr immersive classroom uh, not sure what that's about um, but seems maybe somewhat education related um <laughs> neighborhood news 
So I haven't jumped into one of these live events yet. You can see by the stars there are people who mark their interest in it. So maybe kind of like Facebook events where you can mark where they're interested in the ones that are live, you can see how many people are in it. So Sing for Fun has 10 people um, and it can host a maximum of 60 people in there. So anybody can create their own events and people are doing that. Uh, and yeah, so that's that's one aspect of this. Another would just be meeting up with friends in different spaces and that could be interesting as well. Um, and then, yeah, like uh, once Jim's headset is charged, then he can join in with me and we can actually do a podcast from here too. So you can mark events that you're interested in. So for example, if I go through here, we've got a couple things, Ready Learner One, Neighborhood News. So let's say I'm interested in one of these. I'll open it up. It talks about some interesting stuff here. The hottest thing to happen in alt space since the campfire. Come see what's going on with the community. Entertainment with a view, the rooftop. So I'm not sure what this is, but I'm going to say I'm interested. I'm going to star that. And now if I go to my events list here, I can see my interested events. And there it is listed there. I can also see my friends' events. I can see events that I've attended. Um, you can see there's this one, Reclaim Today, that's live right now. That would be this event that I created a few minutes ago. Um, so, yeah, all kinds of different stuff happening. There's also people in here, and like I said, you can make requests of people. This is my username, Timmy Boy. So, if you use Alt Space, um, you could friend me. And <clears throat> it's interesting. Because this actually, unlike some of the other apps that are VR only, uh, you can join from a PC in Alt Space. So uh, they don't have a Mac app. They don't have a Linux app, which is kind of a bummer. It looks like it's PC only. It's available on Steam. And you can download it, and your same login gets you in there. Oh, Jim, are you here? You are here. Look at you. Nice. Um, so I was just giving people. You are. <laughs> it actually had a setting for a personal bubble, and I turned it off. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just for you. Um, yeah, so I don't know how sitting works in here. Now, one thing I need to check and see is whether or not your audio is going to come through. That will I'll be honest. That's the one thing I didn't test before all this. So talk talk for a little bit. It was cool seeing you in this like Mr. Rogers like virtual living room, like you know some sort of apartment, you know, and you talking in a short voice and you got the avatar and the beard and thing. It was it was interesting. I, it just there is something bizarre about it. It's almost like Blue's Clues. You ever see Blue's Clues? Uh, no, my daughter wasn't into Blue's Clues that much. Now, you're not a physical being, but the whole idea of the space, you know, almost like, uh, like I don't know, what are those 90s kids cartoons, like, uh, you know, what was the dinosaur's name? Barney. Barney. <laughs> yeah. It's real, but like, there's this kind of like, I don't know, strange, creepy thing. <laughs> yeah. Like. It definitely has that that feeling where everything's very cartoonish looking right all right yeah and i love like the whole idea of like san francisco architecture and that's so cool to see that thing so yeah if you back up a little bit now you can come if you want to come beside me uh, the camera is what ds106 tv sees yeah that's so cool that you did that so it's kind of like a third-party cameraman um Mine's got a bit Should of... I change my avatar? I don't know. What do you think? Now, see, 
I haven't figured out how to sit down, so I guess I'll just stand beside here. Now, I don't think they're getting your audio, so that's one thing I've got to figure out. And you are able to get further back than I am. Maybe because you're a robot and you don't have legs. Yeah. Should so. I put my bubble on? My bubble's on. Should I turn it? Yeah, why? I don't think... I don't know if you need to, but... You do you. <laughs> you're like so small compared to me. I think it's just because I'm closer or whatever, but I'm like a giant compared to a tiny robot view. Now, <laughs> the one thing here, and this is going to be a little on-air futzing, but I'm okay with it, is we've got to get your audio to work. So I want to make sure we can do that. Um, so let me see. Yeah, see, I hear you fine. I'm thinking for this to work, the PC needs to be able to hear you. Give the people some emotion. Now, when does that emoji start? I haven't played with that yet. All right. Yeah. Oh. It kind of came up like a bubble. Yeah, it pops up out of your head. That's interesting. It's fun. Yeah, that's fine. People can't hear you anyway, and I'm going to figure out how we get the audio mute, external microphone. That's the microphone. What about speakers? Let's go windowed for a second. I need to make sure. Oculus, big screen audio, stream. That may work. That may work. Awesome. All right, give me one second. Give me one second. Unplug things unplug here. Things. We're doing all kinds of futzing up in here, but then we're going to get this all going. All right, check. All right, check. That's good. I need to. Check. Yeah. I think we got it. Got it. So now I just need to remove that. This is go for me if I had one. So I can turn that off. And so. Hopefully there's not too much of an echo now. I'm thinking that my audio is coming through and Jim's will as well. Now how well that audio comes through, we'll see. So I'm not even sure anyone will be watching this. This is more of us just kind of fussing around and thinking through things. But Look at you. That's a pretty good avatar. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Hi, everybody. Can they hear me? 
I believe they can now. Yeah. That's pretty cool. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Good. Hopefully they can, or else this will be a lame <laughs> podcast. <laughs> It's all experimental. I mean, that's to me, I mean, yeah. as we get started, that to me has been the funnest part about the last, I mean, it's been hard the last few months for everyone, I'm sure, but it's also, and it's been work for a variety of things, but it's also been for me, I just locked in on the things that I enjoy and tried yeah. to like get some things done and also like explore things that I'm interested in and just keep myself occupied. And it's not, I don't think I'm alone because other people seem to be doing it too. And I know there's a lot to balance and some people have more, you know, uh, issues than others for a variety of reasons work, you know, managing, the, but I was in a good situation because I was kind of used to this stay at home lifestyle. So it kind of yeah. just put me in a situation once I got over things to say like, okay, now what can we do in this situation that will make it fun? You know? Yeah. It's so, funny because I don't know. When I, yeah, it's funny because like when I think of like virtual environments and stuff and like Second Life and all that, it all seemed fairly lame before this, like before before all this hit. Like I would look at a space like Alt Space VR and I would go, Yeah, I'm never using that. Like I mean I look around, I'm just sort of like and now I'm just sort of like, this is amazing. Like, oh my gosh, we could finally like, you know, we could meet up. Now I did that's not to be fair. I did do some of the watching movies with my dad in VR and that kind of stuff. So I've experimented I mean I've obviously played with VR and that kind of stuff. But these sort of communal and what you might call social spaces, for me, social but remote made no sense until now. And so now I'm thinking through it and thinking, well, what does it look like to have spaces in which you can have some sense of socialization in a in a world where right now you really can't, you know, you can't, I mean, you know, the, the closest you can get is maybe like parking cars next to each other and waving from the window. <laughs> But otherwise, you're kind of locked down to the house, and that'll eventually change, I'm sure. But for now, it's sort of our new reality. And so spaces like this end up being really interesting to me because it's more than just a Zoom call or a video chat. Like, you know, there are some parts that you miss, like some expressions, but at the same time, there's a there's a different level, I think, of intimacy in this that you don't get um, from just seeing someone on a screen. I agree. I mean, just watching you talk as you're yeah. being represented here is really interesting because, you know, we're not used to it. And that's why it's kind of interesting is because it's a new space for everybody. And I agree with you, like, given the options, you probably would say, ah, you know, I don't need that right now. or I'm not going to spend hours of my day in this virtual space. But uh, given the limitations, you know, new things emerge. The thing you mentioned while I was watching as I was recharging my headset was, the whole idea of like doing something like karaoke in here or, yeah. you know, some sort of group watch of some kind or just, you know, it's, it's, what is this? We've seen versions of this before when we've done Second Life and, you know, Second Life had some momentum for a while in 2007, 2008, 2009. I, I took part in yeah. quite a few presentations by the new media consortium to be a part of those. And Tom Woodward and I and Brian Lamb had a lot of fun. You know, I remember playing in there mm -hmm. with Martin Burtis and the whole BTLT team before it kind of jumped the shark and people were like, what are we doing in here? But there was a <laughs> sense of like exploration there and like fun. And sure. I think uh, like I, there's no reason not to approach this in the same way. And I think one of the things that interests me is you've already set up for OER 20, a really compelling situation. And it wasn't VR per se, but just for like karaoke. And for yeah. me, it's a really interesting thing to think about like, what does it look like to create spaces that feel like inviting and open to come in and do something fun and connect? I know my family has been talking about the OER karaoke for, you know, what was that, three weeks ago now? And like, they're all like, yeah. when are we doing karaoke again? So, you know, we're starting even like, re I mean, uh, Italy is starting to open up a little bit now. Like we're going to be able to go to the hair, get our haircuts again. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to be, school has been canceled for the year, but like we are going to get some 
kind of space we can take walks with the family outside again things yeah. that we haven't been able to do for almost two months so that's all coming next week so i do think there will be a subtle reopening which is nice but i do <laughs> think a lot of us aren't going to be so quick to jump out and start doing things you know even though we can default to a social in a context of the physical and it's good i think a mm-hmm. lot of us will be exploring these spaces as a result of i was thinking about it and i know i talk a lot but bear with me i was thinking <laughs> about it because one of the big questions that universities are facing right now and i've been talking with not all about it is like they're doing a gamble right there's a big gamble on the table like do we open up and business as usual in the fall or do mm-hmm. we kind of say you know what we're going to heavy online and then see how things pan out and then if we can we'll let people come back but either way it's a gamble right some folks are going to win some folks are going to lose because we don't know if this thing is going to come back you know in a couple of months hardcore or if it's going to always be with us we're going to modify everything or what so it's just interesting to think that even though we'll have that first rush of like ah i'm out i think they'll be in the back of everybody's head this sense of like well, maybe I'm going to limit some of my exposure outside in these social places because, you know, I, I don't want to take the risk or I'm just not comfortable or for whatever reason, those germ phobias that have already existed just get like highlighted and, you know, blown maybe even out of proportion, arguably. But it's just interesting mm-hmm. to think about what the long term effects of this and why maybe this playing isn't just a short term dawdle, if you will. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and the, the karaoke thing's kind of interesting, too, because that's one area where I could be having a little bit of a separation from, like, having the virtual might actually be a good thing for some folks, because you usually find with karaoke, there's, like, there's a couple different camps. There's obviously the ones like you and I who could care, couldn't care less about being <laughs> on screen, audio, visual, bring it all in person or virtual. It doesn't really matter. Like, we're going to do it. But then there's some folks who would love to participate and sing, but don't necessarily like being in front of a camera. And so this could be the perfect opportunity for someone to feel like maybe they could dip their toes in and even be a part of something in a way beyond just like joining a Zoom call, but maybe keeping their video off and feeling like, "Eh, I I can't do that. And so I just won't do it at all. And so that might be an area where this environment actually allows people to not necessarily come out of their shell, but to allow them a, a safer way, you know, for them a, a more natural way to be a part of something without feeling like got to have a camera, got to have a good microphone, got to have all that, like you've got a whole equipment set up at home just to be able to participate in some meaningful way. So now you do need a VR headset. So <laughs> some headset. And they're Although, impossible to get. <laughs> Yeah, well, although I say that, but I did mention this earlier, Altspace does allow you to connect on a, on a um, uh, Windows PC. So um, oh. so you don't necessarily need to be in VR to join. Now, obviously, it's a little different in terms of the feeling of it if you are um, in virtual reality, but it's not necessarily a requirement. If you want the two D, two-dimensional version of it, you could join on a PC and have that same experience. So, which is also cool to think about bringing guests in on this. Like you could be in VR talking to someone, but they could just join on a PC, which is kind of fun too. So that is, um, that does, yeah. So that does open up a, another the element. Other point to there with OER and karaoke and just karaoke in general, whether in VR or even with the video setup is you eliminate another possible two obstacles, alcohol, Right, because a lot of times that's associated with like yeah. a bar setup. And like one of the things sure. that was funnest about me is for me was not that Apple is a bad thing, but like you know sometimes that can be a uh, you can't get your kids in. Some people don't yeah. feel comfortable for whatever reason. But the other right. thing is that having my kids in the karaoke was a blast. Yeah, <laughs> and they loved it. And like I wouldn't feel necessarily as comfortable in a different context, and everything depends upon context, but. I am super yeah. interested in the idea of trying to push out, whether through VR or just through cameras or some combination hybrid, these little kind of karaoke rooms or even events that Reclaim Hosting kind of sponsors and puts on and just, you mm-hmm. know, or we do or DS106 TV and just runs because I just yeah. think that would be fun. Yeah. 
Well, it'll be fun and like you were getting at a little bit, like people and businesses and organizations, like everybody's perspective is going to have to change. It's already changing. Our world has changed. And so, you know, I don't think anybody has a good sense of what that looks like going forward. So the best thing we can do right now is to put everything on the table and experiment. You know, I mean, the, the yeah. worst thing you could do is just be either um, defeatist and say, well, this sucks. And so I'm just going to crawl in a hole and just, you know, hope that normal comes in the future, you know, and, and then it never does. Or, you know, vice versa, you can say, let's try anything and everything to maintain some sense of life, right? To, to maintain some sense that like, you know, we can be social, we can be active, we can, we can do stuff to keep going. And so it'll be interesting to see in various industries. I know this morning we were talking about the idea of the arcade and, <laughs> and whether or not that's even still gonna be a thing when this is over. Of course, arcades right now, all completely closed, much like any kind of entertainment type venue and i and one could arguably say before this that was like a growing industry this idea of like entertainment yeah. spaces you had escape rooms you had throwing axes at <laughs> things you had um right. you know wrecking rooms where you could take like a chainsaw to a car or something i mean there was all kinds of like anybody who could figure out some type of entertainment and then they would add alcohol into the mix and that would be a business model for someone and yeah, so we were going exactly. For, yeah, we were going for the classic arcade in the arcade bar idea that was so popular. And now all of that has sort of a, a different frame <laughs> because it's like, wow, it's you're, you're in. Yeah, you've got groups of people together with an arcade. Everybody's hands are on everything. And so you're sort of like, oh, wow, how often would you have to wipe these things down? Like every three minutes? I mean, it's just not practical. And so what does it look like to to give that same sense, because I think the interest is still there. People still want to get out. They still want to socialize. They still want to play the games. But how do you do that in a safe way, this, you know, for the next foreseeable future, which could be, you know, at least two years. And so what does that look like now? Yeah, one of the things I was thinking about as we were talking about that this morning is I watched that movie Contagion, which I know you've seen too, and it kind of really does an interesting job based on SARS in the early 2000s of talking mm -hmm. about this and my like, projecting. But one of the funny parts of that movie is there's two people who work at the CDC um, and the Center for Disease, Con Disease Control, or I forget the exact thing what it translates to. But at, anyway, they basically are sitting in these two hazmat suits looking at these viruses, talking about what'd you do for Thanksgiving or what'd you do for Christmas? And it was like, they yeah. were having this social conversation, but they were completely isolated from one another by the suits. Yeah. And so my idea for the arcade was to create a kind of speakeasy space where we create, like we have like hazmat suits for people. They come in, they dress in the hazmat suits and then they can go about and play the game, drink mm. the beer. Yeah. And uh, it's not viable as a, as a right. long-term solution. But the yeah, thing about it, to throw someone else's suit on, right? <laughs> <laughs> Who wore this suit before me? But the thing about it, and I have to think you're thinking along similar lines as me. The thing about it is that, like, I'm still very much imagining what it looks like in some fashion. When we were doing reclaim video, we weren't like, oh, we're going to open up a video store and make money. We were more right. like we were going to try and make this thing interface with the web in an interesting yep. way. And I know you've been playing with the pinball through DS106 TV already. I've been playing with some of the old school consoles and name games mm -hmm. still in process. But I'm very interested in where those two can coincide. And if yeah. there's a space that we still have and still have the games, which I want, and still have all that stuff, how does all of that kind of overlap and i think the only way we'll know is by keep doing what you said is remain interested not suggest that this is the end be defeatist and say we'll wait till everything goes away because this could happen again this could be more yeah. long term and we're not trying to scale this as a solution for an institute or a solution for a you know a field of you know anything just as a way for us to remain focused and moving 
towards something we like, you know? And I think that's where I think a lot of the stuff goes from zero to 60 so fast is people like, well, that can't be because, well, it can be if we're not claiming this is a solution for everything and this is the only way to do it. And, you know, this is the right way. Oh, this is a way to think through things we like in a virtual environment to understand how physical and virtual connect. I mean, that's what's interesting about VR. So throw everything out as a result of, ah, it's just VR. This, it just, it just seems to me very useless, you know, as useless as saying VR Mm -hmm. is the solution to education, (laughs) you know? So I don't know, that's, that's my thing. Well, and I remember when we were first designing out what our cave would be, we had a space set aside for virtual reality. And as we yeah. got to designing it, that was kind of one of the things that we were sort of, uh, I don't know if people will be into that or not. Is there a business model there? Maybe, maybe not. And we frankly just ran out of space because we wanted more physical games in there, it, which, which is really exactly. funny to, to say out loud now is like, oh, get rid of the VR because we need more space for physical games. And now what if it's the opposite? And what if it's sort of like, exactly. what if what if now creating spaces for people to privately in a safe and sanitized environment come and and get into a space like this when they couldn't do it in their homes, for example, that's right. would be really yeah. interesting, right? I mean, or for a group of people to each be in separate spaces within a building and be able to put these headsets on and get together like this. So I don't know. I, there, that, that, there is there a, could be something there. There's a vision of that. Have you ever seen uh, Spielberg's Minority Report? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. With Tom Remember, Cruise. Remember there's that guy, it's a sleazy place, but there's that whole VR virtual world where you would go into your little cubicle and they, they mm-hmm. would feed you a fantasy. And some fantasies right. were bizarre and twisted, but this idea of being in this place and then having an experience that then could link you to all these other places. Like, I've been thinking a lot about that just to think about like, it's also associated with alienation and mm-hmm. kind of this darker sense of like, oh, here we are. But like, how do you take something like that and make it almost, I don't positive. know, connect? Yeah. Positive. Exactly. Right. Like something you yeah. want to do, something you're excited. And that's why I keep on coming back to the karaoke. Because although we were isolated, it didn't feel that way. It felt like a yeah. bridge, you know? Yeah. And so I that mean, to me think- was important. I think a lot of the Hollywood type stuff tends to veer towards the dystopian with that. Even like Ready Ready Player One, the whole idea was yeah. that everybody's in their VR headsets because the actual world has gone to shit, <laughs> right? Like that's always yeah. the narrative, right? It's like like anybody who would put on a headset is doing it because the real life world sucks. And I don't, I don't want to believe that that's the case right now. I mean, yes, this virus sucks, but... It's more a sense of like, we have been given obstacles right now in terms of our ability to be social. And so what do we do with those obstacles and how do we overcome it? And what are the different ways? And this being just one of many in how we could do that. And so, you know, for me, it's, it's an exciting time. I guess, you know, I, every day when I wake up, I'm trying to think through it on the arcade side, like, like what's going to be that drive for me like to innovate and change and it it you know like you've already got some ideas i for me like it's always i I was trying to look up like the different stages of grief because (laughs) there's there's this like (laughs) it's true like there's this trajectory right where like first you're just like crestfallen and you know i mean that was me um, that was me a month ago when i when I realized like, wow, this, everything is shut down. Everything's on pause. This whole thing has come to a complete screeching halt. And so now like I'm slowly coming out of that hole and going, okay, now it's like, you know, we we're starting to come to the realization that it's not just on pause for a month or two, like there's it's things have changed. Right. And so you come out of the hole and realize, wow, like, things look vastly different than they did a month ago. And so now I'm, I'm starting to come around to like, so what now, right? Like now I can finally with myself have that conversation. Whereas before it was just sort of like, this sucks, the world's over, 
screw it all or or vice versa lying to myself and thinking this is all going to pass right like just let's wait for this to pass and then we'll get back to normal right you know whatever exactly. normal was and so Ooh. it's finally coming around to that idea of like okay normal's not a thing anymore so let's just deal with it and let's do the best thing that we can do is to not again not be defeatist but think like what the hell can we do to innovate like we've been given an opportunity here to to basically go back to a blank slate and say, what do you want to do? And luckily for us, I think, you know, some of these businesses had to change on the fly, like restaurants around town here. I mean, they were given no notice at all. I mean, within a week, it was just sort of like you're closed, you can do delivery and carry out only. And some of these restaurants had never done that before in their life. And, you know, even still, it's not going to replace the income that they had before. And so, People are having to very quickly change up every aspect of their business, and some of them are handling it better than others. And the ones that are handling it the best, I see, are just like, screw it. We're just going to go. We're just going to figure things out. There's a there's a place in town called Juan More Taco. They have a brick and mortar place, but they started as a food truck. Now they have a brick and mortar spot, um, small staff, and as soon as this thing hit, they were like. All right, well, here we go. So instead of using our kitchen for food, we'll, we'll still do delivery and carry out, but now we're gonna start making meals for hospital workers. If you wanna pay for those, you can do it. And they've been delivering hundreds of meals to the elderly, to the hospitals, to everything. And it's just like they doubled down on charity work <laughs> in the midst of a virus when everybody else is just sort of panicking, like, how do I keep jobs? And they're like, we need to keep busy. You know, I've seen breweries creating um, hand sanitizer with their equipment. I've seen all kinds of different folks just changing up everything. I saw one brewery, um, not here in town, but one that I read online that had been using their massive equipment to create a, a huge soup kitchen to deliver soup for the homeless because they don't need to brew beer right now, but they have the ability to do a massive amount of soup in the same equipment. And they're just like, why wouldn't we do this? Because we can. And so I think that's amazing to have that kind of mentality to just say, here, we have the space, we have the equipment, and the whole world is very different. So what do we do now? You know, and let's let's not take the handbook from a month ago. Let's let's just rewrite it right now. So we we luckily have the time, I think, to think through what that might look like in the coming months. Um, and so what does that look like for us with the arcade, you know, and you know, God forbid the hosting. The hosting is still good. Um, you know, luckily higher ed hasn't completely <laughs> shit the bed yet. <laughs> so across <laughs> exactly. the is there. But, you know, on the arcade side, I think it's a really it's a it's an interesting thought experiment. Um, and I'm just finally, I think, mentally coming around to okay, I can start to have those conversations with myself. I agree with you too. I agree with you about the grieving part. Like it's funny to think about, but think about how locked in we've been to the arcade for the last six months. Mm -hmm. Probably for the last month and a half, we haven't talked about it. Like mm -hmm. We just stopped talking about it to each other. Like that was our only way to deal with kind of grief is it's over. Right. You know, where we, we luckily, like you said, we weren't so deep in that we couldn't walk away from some of our commitments. But at the same time, it was like we were looking at, you know, a very optimistic open date of next week. <laughs> yeah. Like that's crazy to think about now, but that's next that's that's Friday, just yeah. to be clear. So I think we are uh we are kind of in the situation. I still believe that it can happen and it can happen mm -hmm. in some form, like not the same form like you said, but I do think that we can really start to sit down, think about some of the stuff we've already started, like between media like the radio, which is a very different beast, but for me, like it always shows to me the need to like communicate through this media, to connect yeah. through this media around the culture. And that's what mm -hmm. all of these folks are doing with the gaming, the arcades, with the karaoke. All of them have that in common. They're all bringing people together around this kind of shared object of culture that then becomes a social event. And I think there's a lot of kind of very instructive like possibilities within that idea. It doesn't matter if it's throwing axes, doesn't matter if it's singing songs, doesn't matter if it's playing games. Yeah. 
watching movies, the shared sense of like, we said at, at uh, the faculty academy, there was a presenter who talked about um, this idea of the shared object of desire that I keep on coming back to again and again, talking about all of our pursuits in some ways come physically and socially, not necessarily physically, but socially through a sense and sometimes that shared purpose is an object. That object is a movie or a, a song or a game. Keeping our kind of sense of an idea and saying, like, how are we going to still embody and encapsulate that sense of a shared purpose around the thing to and make it feel genuine and not just an exchange in a transit that was trying to tell you something? is what we're looking for, I think, right now. And like you said, it was pretty clear to us a month and a half ago how we would do it. We'd get the space, we'd put the game in there, we'd have some beer, we'd have some food, it would all be good, and they would come. Right. That's not the case so much anymore. And mm -hmm. so, like, I think the really do it right now is keep doing what we're doing. Yeah, playing with stuff like this, talking to a TV that no one's watching, like playing <laughs> music on the radio that no one's listening to, you know, listening to a video on YouTube that no one cares about. Like, I think there is something there to that sense of a persistence of thinking through. Let's give you right now. I'm loading Atari 5200 games on an emulator emulator game playing Pi, so that I can reproduce that whole experience, and then Tommy and I can play doubles on DS106 TV to demonstrate and talk through a bit of that. It's educating, it's educating, educating for him because these are all games he's interested in, but doesn't really know the long history of. It's just fun for me, and I like the challenge of trying to do that kind of stuff. And I think mm -hmm. I have to believe, just like with our, with our hosting or with anything we've done, if you do something with the ed tech, if you do something for long enough and you kind of do have a sense of it and you believe in it and you believe in what you're doing and it's not scummy right? and sometimes when it's scummy it's still successful but if it's not scummy it's like you can still get up every day and do it and feel good about yeah. it and everything we've done to lead up to the arcade i still feel good about it. i still stand behind it. it's not like we were just doing that to make a million dollars in fact we were doing it because we wanted to and now it's changed, but it doesn't mean we're going to walk away from it. We're just going to double down. Yeah, no, definitely. I feel like, and I feel like all these experiments are useful, right? Like these experiments have helped yeah. us. And, it, and it's weird because like you never know that it's going to be useful right out the gate. Like, I mean, people like thought it was really weird that we're a video for remotely from a robot and then we were streaming this out and you know we had to figure out how to stream things to the web without youtube because of all the copyright issues and then some of that it always kind of circles back and so like, this has become the way i work is I, I i never have that sense of like but is it useful because i know like maybe it's not but maybe it is or, or maybe it'll be useful in a different context entirely to the point where yeah. now you know, the, the VR headset that I bought two years ago and the video streaming server that I set up, you know, two years ago is all of a sudden all coming together in a very different way. And maybe even this isn't useful, but it doesn't matter because little pieces of it get get used in different contexts in ways to where suddenly you feel like we can do this. We have the technology, we have the ability to do it. So, you know, it becomes less of a burden. So I, I'm excited by all this stuff. And it, it's really cool, yeah. especially especially in, in 2020, like the the amount of technology and, and the, the ability for what we have to do, we have so much at our fingertips where I think we couldn't have asked for a better time for a situation like this to, to occur, um, you know, exactly. between, between bandwidth, between technology and the devices that we have and everything else. So to me, it's fun to experiment and to play. I agree. And I have to say, on that point, like, it's a very different, I think, experience 
to allow for these people to do various kind of explorations like the flip classroom, like domains, like gaming and learning. And a lot of people said, oh, look at this research happening in there. You know, it's so divorced from what we're doing. At this point, like they are the people that that administration is turning to for advice, right? For ideas, like for an informed, concerted, intellectual kind of notion of what's possible. Same thing that happened at, DT at DTLT with UMW when the MOOCs came. Yeah, you know the president luckily came to us and we're like, "Here's what we think, and we know we've been doing stuff like this." And I just think the the problem is the folks who have disinvested from that kind of sense of it's got to be useful. I got to be able to link it to the numbers. I got to be able to kind of match it with my ledger. Um, those are the first people who are going to be selling out their core infrastructure to OPMs and have nothing to fall back on. And kind of, kind of completely brings into a larger question about this notion of, you know, what's the value then of the experience? If you're selling out your core curriculum to a bunch of companies who are basically doing the same thing for everyone. So what am I and when you, for? And when you've always, when you've always got to have to have that one, which administrators do, that one-to-one -one connection between the work you're doing and the value, and there's no, like, like, and not, not just this value in terms of, well, this is a useful for experimentation, but value in terms of like, this is bringing in revenue, this is bringing in students, tuition dollars, all this kind of stuff, everything. It always has to have that one-to-one -one connection instead of saying, hey, the work that I'm doing in this experimentation may be used in the future. And, I, you know, like, again, you know, administrators just don't think that way. Everything's just very, you know, nuts to nuts. You know, everything's very, very particular. Yeah. And it's just sort of like, you know, if you can't just buy a PlayStation because there's no value for that, it's like, well, you know, if we were experiment with gaming and this, and then, you know, and all of a sudden PlayStation comes out with the VR headset and you're playing with that. And it's like, well, I can't just buy toys for you. You know, like there's always these conversations yeah. around where it's a very narrow focus of like that, that one particular thing you're doing right now may or may not have use. And it's like, yeah, okay. But, you know, if you can take little pieces of those things and, and build out an experience, then yeah, it actually can. So, yeah. yeah. It's interesting too. And I know there's a longer history there about, you know, re, not everyone had to go to school and to get a college degree previously. That's more and more the demand. But then again, with that demand, you know, you've gotten rid of a lot of your core tenure faculty, gotten rid of a lot of the kind of impulse to do research. And you've offloaded mm -hmm. a lot of that. And so you kind of put yourself in this tenuous situation, right? So, I mean, I understand the struggle is real and it's bigger than, you know, any kind of quip I might make about it. 
But yeah. I mean, in a moment like that, you certainly realize how valuable it is to kind of have kept a certain amount of open mind about possible alternatives, even if it's something as simple as online learning is possibly sustainable and could be really useful to invest in. <laughs> I mean, even something as basic right now as that, like you don't even have to go to the you know, craziness of VR, like, hey, maybe online courses, you know, could be a thing, you know? <laughs> it's, it's funny, but it's a weird moment where now, like, it is the thing, you know? And I think, mm -hmm. I just believe that a lot of faculty now, given that the circumstances and the need has brought it to bear, you know, are figuring out cool things that a bunch of practitioners who want to imagine, or a bunch of theorists who want to imagine it never could, right? Yeah. The practice has to be, you know, shared and passionately appreciated for it to grow. And so mm -hmm. in that regard, this could be a really big boon for all of this kind, you know, and I know right now we're in a very difficult transitional period, but I don't think we're going to look back, just like I was saying in, in Slack earlier, I don't think we're going to be looking back at, at online per commerce in the same way we do about malls and all that, mm -hmm. right? Like for me, the mall and that whole idea of, uh, shopping at these stores and stuff is just is they're going to be the first line to go i personally believe like our idea of the mall and that sense of shopping in the wake of this is is not long and so that brings yeah. us back to the whole idea of the reclaim arcade and how we reimagine it with certain possible changes and i could be wrong i've been wrong a million times before but like what does that mean as we go forward with some of this stuff like what does that mean for us and our passions and what we want to share and how will they look different in this age, just like teaching is going to look somewhat different or at least a different media, you know, it still could be good teaching and good learning, but the media is changing. So that's, and it's, it's compelling to me. <laughs> and it's a good time for those conversations because I feel like, you know, a lot of, you know, Italy's probably at the peak and is on their way downwards. You yeah. say still right. going up, but you know, God, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we're going to start to turn that peak as well. So you're going to have a summertime where hopefully most countries are on a downward swing, hopefully, you know, at some point over the summer. And so like these next couple months are the time to figure this out, you know, as people start to think about what does it look like for certain places to start to open up for people to kind of like come up for a breath of fresh air and think, okay, what is the quote unquote, the new normal? You know, and so I yeah. think this is the exact right time to be thinking through this and to say, all right, we've been given this time. We've been, we, we have this stuff. What are we going to do with it? So I'm excited to have those conversations. So. You know what? You're right. And when you're right, you're right. <laughs> you're right well, that, too. I think that's, I think that's the right <laughs> note to end this episode on. This was probably the trippiest Reclaim Today episode. <laughs> We've it's done, crazy. I uh, love it. In a while. And, you know, cool. but that, that's what I loved about Reclaim. I mean, and that's the other thing about Reclaim today and DPLT today and the long history of that. It's like when you're doing the things, you're always like, why are we doing this again? But then when you go yeah. back and I look at it and you provide some of that context of the moment you were going through, like the moment we're going through right now is kind of weird. And like mm -hmm. nothing we say, you know, <laughs> none of, we're not pretending like this is the book of Job and read the Bible and study it and take the word. This is yeah. just basically two idiots trying to deal with the world as it's changing. And I, pre I mean, I don't want to speak mm -hmm. for you, Tim, but I appreciate <laughs> that about those, those videos, yeah. frankly. You know? No, absolutely. Absolutely. So two idiots hanging out together. Thanks. <laughs> In in Steve in uh, what was it called? Blues Clues. This is our Blues Clues. That's episode. right. What was it? Um, I'm I Steve. was just very, I was very briefly looking on Twitter and let's hold on. I see. That's what cool. That you can barely even get up here. Paul Bond said it looks like Timmy and Twicky from the old Buck Rogers show. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, right, Wiggy. Twiggy was the was the Twiggy. was the uh, the robot. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, the Buck Rogers yeah. is before my time. So, yeah, that's well, right about on the verge of my time, <laughs> the beginning. Of it. <laughs> yeah, I saw Twiggy well, that's awesome. Buck Rogers. Well, I'm gonna sign off here, or I'm gonna at least. Uh,
throw the video up here to close this out, but thanks to everybody who was maybe watching live, as well as the folks yeah. who will probably catch this on the archive. We appreciate it. And more experimentation to come, right? That's right. Always. Always and forever to me. Bye, everybody. That was Kisses I Blew, but you can't see it because it's virtual. <laughs>